Hello everyone. It is December 9th and I just have a quick minute here to check in with you while my husband ran out to get us some lunch. But look at this. It is noon and well it's tangled. <laughs> I did already knit stripe number nine on my advent socks. I'm all caught up. Hey me. And uh Yesterday, I did post this through Instagram, but I finished and blocked um, my quill blanket after I knit in or wove in all of the ends. Look at how pretty it is. I am so happy with it. It is really large. It is definitely large enough for two people. So I'm really, really happy with it. Um, you can also wear it as you know, an over the shoulder wrap, which I might do. Like it is, it's a big, big wrap. So I finished that. And obviously when you finish something, you want to cast on something new. I mean, I'm caught up with my socks and um, socks, sock snake. I showed you yesterday is work knitting. So I kind of want some fun knitting too. And I have a couple of options. The first option and what I acquired yarn for first is sorry I gotta grab it here um, this yarn and this is linen quill from Pearl Soho um, I can't remember the colorways but I will put it down below and I was influenced by Stacy of stress knits to knit um, the half and half triangle wrap which is a pattern by Pearl Soho as well and I'd ordered this yarn for it. The other option is this beautiful yarn that I ordered from Chelsea Lux Yarns. This is Pink Peony um, or her mohair base and this is her Superwash Merino DK. So they are meant to be held double and they were intended for her Christina hat which I'm Christina so that's very appropriate. Um, but I I think I might actually use this yarn to knit a Kobu cat. I knit one three or four years ago. It's my favorite hat. I have a big noggin and I have knit several hats for myself, but that is the only one that really fits when like I like to wear my hair sort of in a bun um, and it's the only one that has fit me really well, but I've lost it or misplaced it. I'm not sure where it is. Um, so I'm thinking of knitting a second one with this yarn, but I'll have to double check if it uses DK or fingering weight. Um, so that's another option. And then I just got a notification that I have a couple of skeins of mohair. I posted on Instagram the other day for some ideas on where to get a mohair or a Surrey alpaca to hold with my advent calendar from Woolberry Fiber Co. I want to knit a, um, I can never say this word right, a uh, habitation throne? I'm not sure. Joanna of Knitting the High Notes has, or Stitching the High Notes, she's knit a couple of these and it's just beautiful and I thought it would be a really fun way to use all of the minis for my Woolberry calendar and then I thought by adding in a strand of mohair in like a really neutral color, would blend the colors together and marl it out a little bit um, and also just make it extra snuggly. That I will probably use as a wrap. Um, so that's option number three and I'm not, I can't decide which one to go with. So for right now, um, if you have been knitting one stripe per day and you're knitting like a full length or calf length pair of socks, then we'll be coming up on heel day here in a few days. So I know I talked a little bit about heels the other day, but I wanted to show off a couple of other ones that work with striping yarn. And um, the one that I often go to, the one that fits me the best is a heel flap and gusset. So that is what this is. You knit, you'll knit cuff down, knit your heel flap, and then you turn the heel, you pick up all around, you knit your gusset, which is this little part here, before you finish your foot and then your toe. Um, so that is how I normally do my heel. So there's this one, you can kind of see it has like a little bit of waffle texture. That is a, um, I have partridge heel and there's lots of, if you just Google I have partridge heel 
there'll be lots of recipes that come up, but essentially you just knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one, and then you purl back, and then the next row you do it opposite. So you offset your slip stitches by one, and that will get you this. If you don't offset your stitches by one and you knit, slip, knit, slip on every row, you'll end up with this um, heel. So same thing on the pink one, um, I knit, slip, knit, slip. The other one, I knit, slipped on one row and slip, knit on the other row. So that's just the only difference between these two heels. So I like those. And then there is a heel like this. Now this is a fish lips kiss heel. Um, and a fish lips kiss heel from here down is what it would typically look like. And it is a really simple heel to work. Now it doesn't fit me super well. I have a high instep. So what I've done here was I knit a small, like this little one inch heel flap, and then this tiny gusset here. And that gives me just enough wiggle room that the sock fits me nicely. Otherwise, what I'll find is it'll pull really tight right here. And somebody had asked in the comments if I could um, elaborate a little bit on how um, I would do this. Now, I do have the instructions for this going toe up in a pattern I have on a Ravelry. I think it's just called my Cozy Stripe Socks, maybe. Um, I think it's $2 Canadian, I can't remember, but that it shows you how to knit it toe up and you can put that into any like sock pattern. This, this is completely separate from the heel part. So you can just substitute it in from whatever heel is in the pattern. But for a heel like the shadow wrap heel, um, I don't have an example of it here, but it looks very similar to this. Now a shadow wrap heel and the fish lips kiss heel and, um, those styles of heel, they're meant to be knit as you're knitting the sock. So if you knit toe up, you come to here, you put in your heel and you sort of knit like that, and then you continue in the round and go up. So all I would do is, if I'm knitting toe up advent socks, I would start about two stripes. The stripes on the advent socks are wider. So you go a little bit wider. So I would start two stripes before I wanna insert my heel, and I would start doing these increases that you see right here. Every other row, increase on both sides of needle two, which would be your back stitches or your foot or the sole stitches um, to create this little gusset. And then what I do is I take, um, I take those extra stitches I created, which would be five stitches on either side of the original cast on. So let's say I cast on 64, I have 32 on needle two, 32 on needle one, but after I do this little gusset, I will have five additional stitches on either side. I put those kind of on hold, then I work my heel, I come to here, then, but I already, like this part is already knit, so in order to join this together, I knit back and forth, uh, in stockinette, absorbing one stitch on either side until these stitches have all been absorbed and I'm back down to my 64. Again, I explain all this in the pattern. Um, I don't have it in the pattern yet, but you can also do this top down. You knit until you're happy with the length of your sock, then you knit just this little heel flap. So what I do is I knit 10, like I split my stitches and um, needle one and needle two, and usually your heels worked on needle two. I will knit 10 rows plain stockinette, which creates this little flap. It looks super weird, it does. I have this little flap, there I work my shadow wrap heel, my fish lips kiss heel to turn it around. And then when I'm done, I pick up all around. Again, you'll end up with these extra five stitches on this side and of course on the other side as well. And then you just knit these decreases. Again, I usually do knit a row um, plain, and then I'll do a row with the decreases till I'm back down to my 64 stitches. Then I knit the foot and get onto the toe. So that's kind of how I do, how I put one of those heels in and modify it to fit my foot better. And um, if you're doing an afterthought heel and you need a little bit more wiggle room, then when you cut in to your fabric, like let's say I wanted to put the heel in between these two stripes, then you sort of cut out here and you pick out a row until you have your 64 stitches um, available. I picked all of those up, then I will knit 
four to five, three to five rounds um, around just plain stockinette in a circle before I start the instructions for the afterthought heel. And that gives you again like that extra inch wiggle room and just gives a little more flexibility to the fabric and that works out really well for me. I'm sure there's lots of tutorials out there um, on this. I know Susan B. Anderson's smooth sock operator does the afterthought heel like that where she puts in the plain rows so that's a really good one um, for that instruction. Like I said I have a pattern that puts in this little mini gusset. Mine is only written for toe up right now. I think Mina Phillip of the Knitting Expat, she might have one for doing it both ways, um, but I'll see what I can find and put it in the comments. 